Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to my Code to Care uh, video series. So I'm going to do use cases now, and I think I'll do this as a three-part um, uh, part video. And the question is whether um, generative AI can automatically fix bugs. Uh, and this is an area that the industry is actively working on. And unlike other use cases, uh, this one is not quite solved yet, but I thought I would give you an update on how the industry is approaching this problem and where we stand and what to expect maybe this year on, uh, on us trying to solve this, uh, this challenge. Uh, so let's talk about the opportunity uh, first. Uh, for a typical software company spend um, on, uh, on development resources, let's say, most of the groups that I've been involved in spend about one third of their time and money in fixing bugs and about the, uh, the rest of it, the other two thirds, on new uh, development. Um, and uh, this, the ratio can be a little bit different. Um, depend Actually, I'm gonna stand over here. This ratio can be a little bit different depending on the uh, quality of your work, um, which would lower that. Um, the responsiveness goals you have for your customers, which might increase that, um, as well as how much you're investing in kind of new new things. So this can vary, but um, but for many companies that I've been involved in, one third seems a reasonable number. Twenty five percent, one fourth to one third, but it's a lot, um, and uh, and it's got a big impact in that people don't like to do it necessarily. Customers don't like to run into these things, so the faster you can get this um, this solved the better for your your customers, um, and it's just a lot of it's just a lot of uh, money that's that's kind of wasted. And from a money point of view, uh, if you're a um, you know one billion dollar company, you might spend a hundred to two hundred million on R and D, something like that. Um, and so this is a you know, 30 to 60 million, did I do the math right? Yeah, one, 30 to 60 million dollar problem. It's a little bit more, um, but it's that kind of problem, you know, tens of millions of dollars for an average size um, uh, size company. So if there was a way that generative AI could, could automatically fix bugs or some percentage of those bugs um, and do a really quality job with it, maybe the developers just have to check the work or something, like that, that would be an enormous productivity increase in an area that nobody really wants to work on. Uh, so this is why this is a very exciting problem. The other backdrop I would say for the industry working on this is there was a group looking at measuring large language models and generative AI. And the recognition that they had come to um, is that large language models were basically passing all these exams. So the medical exam, um, the uh, the legal, the bar exam, uh, it was scoring as well as people on the ACT, SCT, GRE, GMAT, LSAT, um, even like technology accreditation, like AWS exams and and uh, things like that. So. Um, so we're kind of running out of challenges to give these large language models because they were just human performance with nearly everything we threw at them. Um, but, uh, but a group of folks thought that fixing bugs would be even more challenging than these other kind of test-based based things. So real world, bugs reported on code bases, could generative AI just take a description of the bug plus the code base and automatically generate a fix that did the job? Okay, so um, uh, in part two and three, I will answer the question whether uh, generative AI can fix bugs and how the industry is approaching it. But this is the setup. We have a, um, a very um, costly opportunity and, uh, and just kind of waste in the system opportunity if we could really accelerate our productivity on that front. Um, and we also have, from a research point of view, we have um, we need to find greater and greater challenges to really push the, um, you know, the uh, continued progress with generative AI and fixing bugs seem like one of those challenges. And I'll detail what that looks like in my next video.
Uh, so that's it. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.